Diagnosis can be tricky. You know, like I mentioned, seven years goes by for the average deaf person patient until they're diagnosed. Um, and the, the reason being is if you look at so sort of the criteria that we use, it's mainly clinical. Listen to someone's history. Um, you know, people can have spasms, and it doesn't mean they have stiff person syndrome. Someone can have a, a stiff leg for reasons not related to stiff person syndrome. But once you start hearing the story um, and you start looking down the road, okay, is this MS? Is this NMO? Is this B12 deficiency? And you're ruling these things out. And then you have to start thinking, okay, what other tests can one do? GAD 65 antibody is one test that can be done in the serum. Uh, we can also test for that in the spinal fluid as well, uh, which is sometimes helpful. And EMG study is often very helpful because there are a couple hallmark findings on EMG study uh, that can help support your clinical suspicion of uh, stiff person syndrome. And that's agonist antagonist co-contraction. So when you make a muscle, you know, the agonist is contracting, the antagonist should relax, right? In stiff person syndrome, since it's a hyperexcitability state, all your muscles are going crazy and they're at war together. So you get this co-contraction, which can be picked up on uh, EMG. You can also get uh, this thing called continuous motor unit potential activity, which normally uh, when someone is getting an EMG and they have a needle that's inserted into the muscle to see how healthy the muscle is, you can have what's called insertional activity. So you have a little blip on the EMG screen, but then after that it should be quiet and you shouldn't see anything. In stiff person syndrome, we will see those motor units just going crazy. So you'll blah, 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 they'll just keep going and there's no quiet. And that in the right clinical context or the antagonist agonist co-contraction in the right clinical context can be supportive of a diagnosis of stiff person syndrome, even in the absence of anti-GAD 65 antibody testing. Because as I'd mentioned uh, before that it's only up to 80% of people will be positive with these anti-GAD antibodies. Um, there are other autoantibodies that have been associated with stiff person syndrome, um, most of which are in sort of the research realm, so they're not commercially available. But there is one called empaphysin antibody, uh, which has a strong correlation with cancer.